apps will be closing down very soon. So this will be the last one I do here, but I am likely to continue these broadcasts in some form on some other platform. And at the moment, the ones where you're best able to follow me is either Twitter, where I am known as at Blotched Emerald, um, or on YouTube, where I just go by my name, I think without a space. But you should be able to find me on either of them if you want to keep following these sort of things, whilst I'm not able to broadcast by a haps because it's shutting down. But anyway, this one is just a broadcast I thought I'd do to talk about the moth surveys that we did down here at Perryhill Wood, which is behind me, in 2021, and some of the species that we've added to the site here. So this site, it's a bit of ancient woodland and some grasslands, paddocks and meadows in northwest London, and it's had moth surveying of various degrees of intensity undertaken um, since the mid-1960s. I've been involved in doing it since about 2004. And we continue to survey every year and we continue every year to add new species and find interesting new things. So last year in 2021, um, we recorded as usual with light traps and other methods, which I'll talk about a bit later. And we recorded a total of, let me have a look at the list here, 244 species, which is a fairly decent count, certainly more than we recorded the year previously um, in various forms. And we added 11 new species to the list for Perryville Wood, species that had not been recorded here previously. And I'll talk about and have a look at some of those. If I can just remember how to do that. There we go. So there's the first species that we're going to have a look at appearing above me, hopefully in a format you can see, but I know Haps does sometimes mess up the formatting. But this is a species called Nemopogon ruricolella. Um, put the chat in. If you're watching this on replay, the chat will not be aligned with the uh, with the images, but I'll type the names as I say them into the chat, just so people can read them and know what they are. Nemopogon Ruby Colella. We attacked a couple of these to a synthetic pheromone lure. And what these lures are, they are lures the plastic bungs essentially impregnated with a chemical that's designed to smell like the chemicals produced by female a female moth of a particular species and the idea is that attracts moths male moths smelling the pheromone coming and thinking they're going to find a mate they drop into a little plastic container allow us to capture them and identify them um now what's perhaps interesting is that the pheromone I was using, the pheromone lure I was using, was not designed for this species. It was designed for one of the clear wing moths, the yellow-legged clear wing, or Synanthodon vespiformis. Um, but the pheromones do tend to attract a bycatch of other species, and this is one of those. Um, so this is a species Probably is not or and possible that's because Everywhere. 
to the to the site in 2021 and if I now add the next one okay I will then go so this species goes by the really rather lengthy name it's going to take me a while to just type it out Aspilapteryx Aspilapteryx Come on, try. Dynigmi Penella. So there you go. That's an easy thing to say, isn't it? Um, and this one is attracted to one of the light traps we run. These are basically boxes with a bright light on them that the moths come to. Drop into the box again, allow us to have a look at them. Uh, I don't know what they are. And one of these came to see us on the 30th of July in one of our light traps. Um, it's a common species, so nothing particularly exciting in that sense. And it feeds on the plant ribwort plantain, which again is a common plant which occurs here. So no particular reason to think it's not being present all the time and just not recorded. And there has been one recorded from the site that's immediately next door to us, Horsenden Hill. So all rather interesting, but it, it, it's also interesting in a site that's been surveyed reasonably intensively for many decades that we are still adding species regarded as common to the site list. Again, fairly attractive moth. And this one, I've got a, a ruler in the image next to it, which show with the divisions in millimeters to give you a sense of scale. So this is a small moth, but fairly distinctive and fairly well spotted. Um, now the next species that we're going to come to, let me just move along. A slightly truncated image on my view, due to apps, but with any luck, you'll be able to see that. And this is a species called Metalampra italica. Emperor Italica. And you might think, and from that name, the, the, the specific name, the Italica bit, meaning something like of Italy. And until about 2003, the only country in the world that this species was known from was indeed Italy. It was, it was regarded as an Italian endemic. It didn't seem to occur anywhere else. It wasn't found elsewhere in Southern European countries next to Italy. But in 2003, one was found here in the UK in Devon. And since then, several more have been found. And it's suspected that it's now established in Britain and breeding. And quite how it got here, how it jumped here from Italy is not clear, possibly accidentally imported with something. Um, this is... This is a species that, uh, again, it feeds on decaying wood, the larva. So again, this isn't a particularly rare thing. Although when you're thinking about stuff that gets imported, you don't tend to import decaying wood. So not really clear how it got here, but it feeds on decaying wood, of which there is obviously loads in a reserve that we manage for nature and where we leave our wood to break down naturally. So it's not surprising. And two of these came to our light trap again on the 30th of July. And there aren't any others known from the area immediately around here of this species. So this is, this is quite interesting. And it's quite interesting to think how stuff is spreading and colonizing and taking over and speculate on, on how it got here. I don't think it is particularly known for this one. Um, I would guess it was probably human assisted. Things tend to be human assisted. Uh, well, that tends to be quite a common way and when you see things sort of jumping a large distance so jumping from Italy to the UK 
rather than spreading up up Europe from there. Again, that suggests that there's something more than just a sort of natural range expansion. So it could well be that this was a human assisted arrival here in the United Kingdom. I'll move on to another species and another species that almost certainly is human assisted in its presence here in the United Kingdom. And this specimen is a species of moth known as Tuta absoluta. It's a species that originated in South America, so quite a long way away from its, its place of origin and its home here. This is not where it is. And it's a species that is associated with, and indeed is an agricultural pest on tomatoes. Um, it was first recorded in Europe in Spain in 2009, and was then recorded in other places in Europe and in Britain was also recorded as a larva here in 2009 in, in tomatoes imported from Spain. And since then, there have been increasing numbers of wild captures of this species here in the United Kingdom, which suggests, well, suggests that there may be a chance that it is finding something to feed on. Tomatoes are obviously grown as a commercial crop here in the United Kingdom, but it's not particularly felt there's enough wild grown tomatoes that it can be using them as its food plant and not being detected. Obviously, if it was on commercial and domestic grown tomatoes, people would probably spot the larva infesting the tomato fruit, which doesn't suggest it's doing that. So there is speculation that it may have been able here to feed on other plants in the nightshade genus. And it may be that it's using those wild plants as what it's got. But this is I'm mean, actually rather an attractive moth. I think it's quite quite an attractive thing. Nice dappled pattern, long striped antenna. But it is something that is known as a pest species agriculturally. And if you are a tomato grower, you won't like the fact that this is here in the country. Um, this was another one that we got to pheromone lures, to the sort of lures I was talking about before, where we have a synthetic, where we have a chemical represent it sort of smells like the chemicals used by the females to attract the males and draws in lures in the males and this was a specific pheromone designed for tutor absoluta i just picked up on spec they happened to be going cheap somewhere so i thought well don't think i'll get this moth seems a bit unlikely it's not that common in britain and we don't go tomatoes here but i grabbed the lure because it was cheap stuck it out and sure enough one of these came to light in late july so that was rather interesting, I thought. Uh, the next species that we've got, um, I haven't actually got a picture of, unfortunately. Um, didn't manage to photograph it at the time. But the next species we got was Coleophora, Coleophora serratella. Oops. Let's even spell it correctly, shall we? Um, and this is a, the, the coleophora are an interesting little group of moths. The caterpillars of these, they form little cases in which they live on the leaves of their food plants. Um, and this, this species, Serratella, which is a common species, um, feeds on a, a variety of food plants, alder, birch, and hazel. Hazel by far and away the commonest of those plants in this site. Um, so again, found one of these. They're not particularly easy to identify, but my friend Rachel did, did the identification for me on this one. Um, and the only other local record, there was one recorded in the neighboring site to this one to, on Horsenden Hill back in 2003 of a larval case. So they do occur. Um, and Again, interesting in a way that a common species feeding on a common plant that we have lots of, hazel, has only been added after all these years of recording. And it shows, even with fairly intensive surveying of the type we're doing here, um, we are missing, you know, we are, we are still only getting a sample and we are therefore missing 
species and not 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 really being able to say we know everything that occurs here even now so that all felt rather interesting um, the next species along on the list i also haven't got uh, a, a picture of it's called Mompha jurassicella it's regarded as a locally distributed species that means it's a bit scattered not not as common as a common thing but not as rare as a rare thing um particularly from the southeast of england which is of course where we are although there's some speculation some evidence not speculation some evidence that its population is expanding and it's spreading out it's a larval this, this larval species feed on on great willow herb in dry situation um, and this one was found by day uh, by just happened to see it net it identify um, net it and put it in a pot so we can examine it and there are a few other records of this from the neighboring site so not as surprising perhaps that we got it here but nice to see um i'm continuing on i think i've got a picture of the next one so we can go back to having a look at some images there we go so this species is known as Lozo Tinia, like that, <laughs> Forsterana. Lozo Tinia, Forsterana. Again, a very common species and one that feeds on a huge variety of plants, including ivy, which is, is an abundant plant here. It's therefore perhaps surprising that it was you know a common species common food plant again but completely new to this site and indeed new to the local area it's not been recorded knowingly in the local area before either so it was interesting to get that and again it's it's showing us just how you know continuing to survey continue to discover things that are clearly very likely to have been here all the time and just gone under recorded year on year so oh, another of those common species and moving on a bit further this is a species of clear wing this is the next one we're going to talk about as well and these were the species i was targeting with a lot of the pheromone lure surveying a lot of those lures designed to smell like female moths are designed to attract things in this family the sassidae and they're an interesting group of moths they have wings that are pretty transparent don't have many scales on them can be seen through they look in structure in wing pattern to some extent and in in, in often in coloration quite like wasps or bees or hymenoptera or things that can sting and this is likely to be a form of mimicry. What they're likely to be doing is they're likely to be using that to protect themselves. The day flying, so of course, things like birds would be looking for a tasty snack. So by looking like a wasp, they're sort of tricking the birds into not eating them because the birds think they're dangerous. Although these are not, these can't sting. They don't do any harm. As far as I'm aware, they're not unpalatable or distasteful to eat. Um, now that type of mimicry, that tends to mean if the things that are doing the mimicking the things that are, pre are, fa are pretending to be dangerous but aren't are too common relative to things that are actually dangerous the mimicry doesn't the pattern doesn't work very well because if the vast majority of things that look like this are harmless the birds will just eat them so these things need to be to some extent rarer than the thing they are mimicking um, and these are typically regarded as either uncommon or scarce species um, this one in particular is the red tipped clear wing. And I, I should really put the name up um, on, on the screen or in the chat. So people who aren't on hats will probably not be able to see the chat. Um, it's Synanthodon Formic AE. Formis. 
for me key for me. There we go. Red tip clear wing. So now that I'm for me pay, for me key for me. And the specific name sort of approximately means ant like ant shaped. I'm not sure it is particularly ant shaped, but it's certainly hymenopteran shaped. Certainly certainly in that group shape. Um, and this one came to the synthetic pheromone lures we were using. Um, it, it came to the lure um, tip, which is actually designed for a different species in, in genus Synanthodon. It's designed for Synanthodon tipuliformis, or the current clearwing. But there's a lot of cross attraction, and this species, this, this red tip clearwing, came to see us, came to one of those lures at the start of July last year. Um, it's a willow feeding species. We don't have vast amounts of willow on the site, but we've certainly got willow on the site. So it's quite possible it's here, it's breeding. The larva feed inside the wood of the willows. Um, so they feed on the wood of the willows in, in the trunks and so on. Um, but they're rather an interesting species, group of species, the clear wings. They're rather distinctive and odd looking. And this one's regarded as having a national uh, uh, being nationally scarce um, but again it's speculated that really the use of these pheromone lures to survey for them is becoming increasingly common and this may well end up being a species that isn't nationally scarce that is actually much more common once people start using the techniques to survey for it and finding it but new to the site here certainly and it was the first one from the local area where again pheromone lures haven't been particularly used Although just a bit later that month, I did get one in my garden, which is just, just not far away from here at all, just on the other side of Horsenden Hill. So it's certainly a, a species that you know, we, I would probably expect to get in future years as well if I were to do it. Um, so the next species that's coming up is another of the clear wings. I thought I'd pause this one. Um, it's the same genus as the previous one, Synanthodon, Andreneiformis. Um, I think the specific name there refers to it looking like particularly uh, a bee in the genus Andrena, the mining bees. And it looks reasonably bee like, it's black and yellow, stripy a bit. But this is, oops, not the orange clearing, it is in fact the orange tailed clear wing there we go typo an orange tailed clear wing this is probably the one that surprised me a little bit to get <clears throat> um i put out the lures for a different species for the yellow legged clear wing which we have recorded here before that's an anthodon vespiformis um, and went back to inspect that lure and quite quickly i saw there were three clear wings in it i thought oh, well, i've got yellow legged again but had a look and it was there were three of these um, and then got some more later in the month. Um, and several in the neighbouring area as well. And the reason it's surprising is if you read the literature on what this feeds on, it feeds predominantly on something called wayfaring tree, which as far as I'm aware we don't have locally, and less frequently on, on Gelder Rose, which we have a very small amount of in the area. So not impossible it could be here, but wasn't something I was expecting. So a little bit surprised when this turned up. It wasn't what I was anticipating seeing. It wasn't what I would have expected in this area, given the lack of food plants. But doing a little bit more digging into what's been thought about it and what's been looked at by people is this is showing up more and more to pheromone lures in places like this where the food plant just isn't particularly present and where it therefore seems a bit odd. And it's suggested that it may be able to utilize other food plants such as honeysuckle and snowberry and elder and possibly dogwood. And they do occur a bit more. None of that's confirmed yet. And again, there are species like the other clear ones, there are species that sort of internally feeds within this woody and stemmy materials of plants. So it's actually not that easy to confirm what's there. You can't just find a caterpillar chewing on a leaf, take it home and rear it on. So that's not known, but that, that's speculated. And the fact that it's been turning up all over the area here and in other places where the food plants are not present does suggest there's something else going on. So rather interesting. 
and certainly something I was uh, quite surprised to see, but almost this year I'll be expecting to see because there were, there were so many. So I'll probably not turn up this year. Now the next species that we've got is called a mocha, nothing to do with the coffee. Cyclophora annularia. I think these are really rather an attractive and marked species, rather pretty pattern, rather distinctive. There are a few other species that are called the something mocha, but this is the mocha. And it was recorded a couple, on a couple of separate occasions to our light traps here in August this year. And it's a nationally scarce species, another one that's quite unusual, and it's a species that's been declining since the, 1960s, since the 1990s. So it's a species that has been getting less common. It feeds on field maple, which is there are scattered examples of through the reserve here. So it's, again, it's possible that the species is here. That's where its larva could be feeding, but it's never been recorded before here. It's not been recorded locally before. It can also take sycamore, which is a almost a, a sort of weed tree, almost as regarded. So. That was interesting. Three of these attracted to light when they'd never been recorded before. And to get them on two separate occasions was interesting. So there we go, a species that is that is new to the uh, sorry, the species that was new to the reserve again. And a reasonably scarce species that I was quite pleased to get. I've not seen one of these for several years in other, even in trapping in other places. So that was rather nice. And then the final species of the 11 we added to the site is another one with an incredibly long scientific name that will take me a few moments to type whilst I'm here. But Uh, so it's the Duix plusia, or Macdonogia confusa. Um, and if you read anything but the most recent literature about the UK, this moth, this says that this is a rare migrant. It's a species that occurs very occasionally as a rare, blown in uh, moth from, from Europe, not something that lives here. But that started to change. It's started in the past decade or possibly two to establish populations in various parts of the UK and is being seen increasingly commonly by people. Um, the first local one to here was recorded in 2019 on the neighbouring site and it's been recorded each year there since. Um, but this was the first example of this during the day and um, I happened to see it in the meadow, actually the meadow just over there just behind me. Um, when I was out doing one of my butterfly surveys, if I remember rightly, saw this, took some pictures of it. It's a really distinctive moth. It's, um, I, I think we should call it the plough moth. I think the, the markings on the wing, that white shape looks very like the constellation called the plough or Ursa Major or the Big Dipper, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but it's currently called Duix plusia. Presumably honoured doing Mr. Dewick or Mrs. Dewick or Miss Dewick or Dr. Dewick or somebody Dewick anyway who found it. And the scientific name Macdonoogi, I suspect there was a Macdunag or Macdunag or Macdunag or something who was involved in naming this as well. And again, the name will be honouring that person. Um, it, it's lava can feed on a whole variety of stuff. So now it's here in Britain, there's plenty of opportunities for it to be around. It, it will take nettle amongst other things, and nettle is, of course, an incredibly common plant. So this seems to be establishing itself in Britain, probably is establishing itself, and is therefore likely to be established here on the reserve in time, if, if, if we're lucky. So I'll, we'll keep an eye out for it and see where it's going. So anyway, there we go. It was a quick run-through of some of the 
moths that we added to the list here in Perryville Wood back in 2021. Maybe the last broadcast I do here on HAP, so I might try and get at least one or two more live wander around broadcasts out whilst, whilst HAPS is still going. Um, but if you do want to keep up with me once HAPS dies, I say my Twitter and YouTube channels are probably the best places to go. And I put them at the start of the chat. And with that, I'm going to sign off. I will leave that image up because I think, no, I think, I think we'll go back to, no, we'll, yeah, let's leave that image up. It's a good one to end on. Duix plusia, species that's colonizing the UK now has arrived, is starting to spread and was recorded here for the first in Perryville Wood. It was the first record was last.